This is where the ancient cities and medieval civilizations emerged and disappeared. This is the cradle of great ideas, a place where science and arts prospered, the crossroads of trade and the boldest ideas. What is Central Asia like today? What do the countries in the region have in common? What is the cultural and genetic code of the peoples living in this part of the world? Stay tuned with Central Asian Guide to find out. Folk storyteller, devotee of Kazakh heroic epic. New generation of folk singers. National Dolls of Uzbekistan. Ancient Jirao, folk storytellers, epic performers, soothsayers, and advisors of the rulers who stood on the very top in the hierarchy of military democracy, shoulder to shoulder, bearers of the spirit of the steppe honor. The peoples of the great steppe always deeply respected them and listened to their words, and during the times of war Jirao were in the military councils. Often they had the final word, because it was believed they could see the future. All the bearers of ancient art still live today. Is it possible to call contemporary performers of ancient epic works Jirao. Is there anything that can be accepted unconditionally by the Kazakh society as an example of the glorious tradition of steppe poetry? There is no definite answer to these questions. Scientists admire the skill of the performers of the heroic epic, but at the same time, they don't sort them out with the medieval singers and soothsayers Akhtam Berdi, Shalkiz, and Buhar Jirao. But the successors of the glorious tradition are not really offended by the fact. Grandpa, the tea is ready. Thank you. Give me him. Come here. <laughs> the secret of family happiness lies in the mutual understanding of the spouses. This is the basis of everything. This is the secret of happiness, not only of spouses, but also of children. All of them, including my daughter-in-law and grandchildren, live in harmony. And all this is due to mutual understanding. Almas Almatov became famous as a performer of the folk epic at a young age. He was a student of the respected Jirao and mastered the ancient skill. Also, he had a unique voice and poetic gift. The audience in Florence, Milan and Geneva applauded him. And then, President of France, Mitterrand, was amazed by a young Kazakh talent and offered him to be an opening act of the gala concert in Paris. This is the epic Yedige Bater. It is also called 40 Butters of Crimea. We have recorded all that folk legacy. We have hundreds of such discs. There is also a music library collected in the 50s, 60s of the last century. Here are the tapes with the voices of the performers of the epic made at the time. The storytelling is our ancient tradition. Since the ancient times, it was passed on from father to son, from son to grandson, and thus preserved until our time. It is believed that the Kazakhs have more than 550 epics. Together with the Mukhtar Awezov Institute of Literature and Art, led by the academician Sayyid Kaskabasov, we performed 50 heroic epics. This is about 120 hours of audio. This is the first such collection of Kazakh heroic epics. Poet Turmagambet Isleuov translated a masterpiece of Persian literature, Shahnameh, to Kazakh in 1936. This is a monumental work, 40,000 lines. We performed it with 20 students for 68 hours. Jirma 
In the first heroic collection, I performed 27 epics. As for my work, here is my poem. It is called Shingis Name, Joshi Name, Alash Name, and Kazakh Name. Total four volumes. The first volume is Shingis Name. It has 15,000 lines. We performed this musical epic together with Tanjirao. When I was five years old, a well-known documentalist came from Leningrad. They were making a documentary series. They made a swing that hanged on a big tree called Karakach. So I was swinging in traditional clothes. And my father sang at sunset. Yes, it was very memorable. At the University of Arts, the folk storyteller researcher teaches traditional singing. Students are waiting for the moment when famous mentor will be evaluating them during the music exam. Put the things in a car. Better in the trunk. Good day. Let me help you. Let's go. Now we will listen to a piece of the folk epic Alpamis. Yernar, you may start. Yernar. Good, Yernar, good. Yerbala teaches you right. I just want to advise you to pay more attention to the inner content of the epic. Since we were little, we have heard a lot about Almaz Almatov, about his work. During the student years, we listened to his audio recordings, lectures at the conservatory. Did not miss his concerts. His distinctive feature is that he's perfectly familiar with the work of storytellers and Girao of different re regions of our country and devotes much time to the promotion of traditional Kazakh art. He works with students a lot and pays special attention to diction, the art of recitative, and explains the importance of communication between the listener and the performer. The art of Jirao is not only for men, but also for beautiful girls. Dina Norabaeva is one of them. This year, she is completing the master's program at our university. She is a laureate of national and international competitions. She will perform the work of the famous Jin Bai Jirao. I can tell you have not been practicing recently, right? Do not hurry. And also, you performed too loud today. But do not forget about the text. You must try to express the content, its philosophy. Okay? Good luck to everyone. His whole life is connected with this kind of art. And he has done a lot for the launch of the program Traditional Art of Girao. In higher education institutions, along with scientists and experts, he worked on developing state standards of education in such a complex and delicate sphere as traditional singing. We have known each other, I guess since 1987. At that time he was a novice singer, performing old works. He has his own unique style and a special voice. In addition, he's a very hard-working person. Oh, hello, nice to see you. Welcome, Abike. Thank you. This is our department. This is our pride. Today, students continue the traditions of our ancestors. 
We still have a lot of work on the development of folk art. And here your help as a scientist is necessary. Glad to be useful. I wish your department prosperity and success. Kazakhstan, Atadan Babaga Murabulan, Kun, Wardala. The art of Jirao is the heritage of our ancestors. It was at the peak of the glory at the times of the Kazakh Khanate and it combines different qualities. In addition to being art performers in the times of Asan Kaigu, Shaki Jirao, Dos Pambet, Bukhar Jirao, Jirao were carriers of sacred functions. They had a special mission. In my opinion, the majority of those who perform folk epics today are more likely to be narrators than Jirao. But Almas, Almatov, can be called a real Jirao because he's a creative person who creates independent epic works. На сегодняшний день не существует жирау. Да, мы знаем, что жирау, если если опираться на работу. Today there are no жирау. According to the scientists, Jira also lives in the Khan's headquarters. He has political component of his profession. Considering this fact, modern Jira no longer exist. They do not create epics. There are only Jirshi, which are performers of epics. As for the epic today, in my opinion, it is the most vulnerable genre. Zhir is a genre that combines several directions, including instrumental performance. Since the Kazakh epic is composed precisely with Dombra, while the Kyrgyz epic Manas is performed without instrumental accompaniment, the Kazakh epics performed with the instrument, the Karakalpak ones with kobas, and so on. It took me 25 years to write Shingas Name. For a quarter of a century, I studied materials on this subject because we are responsible for the truthful presentation of history to future generations. Jira were not just poets or akins. They were advisors to the Khans. They were military commanders, soldiers, batters. At the same time, they had prophetic talents. Many of them were so-called senshi, that is, fortune-tellers, soothsayers, so they had sacral functions. Why does Yediget Tursunov say that they originated in the first century? Because Jirao preserved this sacred function of prediction up to the 18th and 19th centuries. And, of course, they were important for the Khan because they were advisors. And at that time, they were very courageous botters. For example, Jiembet Jirao was a military commander. Dospambet was a warrior. I really like the Tolgao of Dospambet, which he created while dying on the battlefield. He remembers his whole life, recalls his children, his family. He recalls Azov, where he was born. 
And constantly a ritornel, a musical ritornel, which makes it a farewell. At the same time, this word does not fit this work. This tolgao does not show a fear of death at all. The Kislorda region has a place called Korkit Ata. I was born there. From the early age, I listened to stories about this legendary man, listened to his works. Thanks to my father, Nurmakhan Almatov, I was familiar with the works of Nabi Menjasarov, Siddiq Karajanov, since I was very young. My parents introduced me to the ancient art of Jirao. Hello, this is my workshop. Let's go. I'll show you something. Hello, ladies. Hello. How are you? How is Arishka? Good, thank you. The workshop of Dilbari Sakova in Tashkent creates elegant ceramic dolls of incredibly fine work. She has worked as a neonatologist all her life and unexpectedly started making national souvenirs only 10 years ago. Before we do something, we discuss it. These are my assistants. This is Larissa, whom I know for 10 years. Without her, I cannot do anything. This is Tamarachka. She's a very good worker. Larissa, today we will make a sketch. Very well, come on. You give me a pattern. There, it will be necessary to make the folds. It's a Kosovarotka. Here it is necessary to make it slim fit and the standing collar. Here, we dress them up, sew them and give them a shape. And we also have a basement room. That's where our dolls are made, formed and painted. I'll show you now. Hi, how are you? Hello, girls. Hi, how are you? Everything's good? This is my sister, candidate of economic sciences, Lola. I came to get a doll as a gift. Which one would you recommend? Do you have something new? Here, look, for example, I like this one, in the burka. Or you don't like her wearing a veil. You have something new, right? Veil? Beautiful. And the fabrics are different, you see? Beautiful, very beautiful. If you want without a burka, I can show you. Last time I took something like this, but with the black and white satin. Very beautiful, I liked it. Do you have it? Good, and the region? What region do you want? Tashkent. Here's the satin, so it looks classic. And that's it. Looks like it. With this cape. Good. The face is beautiful, and the accessories are beautiful. Yes, it's very beautiful. Really pretty. She has a special cape, and you see, we've got rings and bracelets on hands. Craftswomen proudly demonstrate souvenir dolls, whose costumes can be used to the material culture of Uzbekistan. Look, we have wonderful dolls here, for example, the Bukhara region. They like gold embroidery, therefore, she has a gold embroidered robe. Also, of course, historical dolls. This one is in a veil. To make our doll, we need to know the history and ethnography and folklore, everything. For this, all of that must be studied. These dolls are wonderful. Here is a natural satin, a Khan atlas. It's made from ipaka, a silkworm. Therefore, it's valuable. This is the bride's clothes. Here, a special dress like this and a piece of fabric in her hand. 
so when she's shy, she hides her face. These are Samarkand girls. This is their clothing. This is the crown of Byzantine times, very popular in Samarkand. The presence of red, gold and black is very typical for the Samarkand costume. This is a bride as well, the Tashkent bride. She has a dress also made of silk. Such special ribbons look very interesting, and of course, the cape. This is our Sukhandarya doll. Look, she has special circle embroidery. This is Zoroastrianism. Here is what symbolizes the sun. This is also a Sukhandarya girl. Their colors are brighter, juicier, which is the influence of the Pamir. I had this dream for a long time, probably since the childhood, when I made dolls from plasticine and clay. But the dream came true only 10 years ago, when we began to make these beautiful dolls. Dilbar's dolls are unique. She intuitively mixes the traditional with the modern. It turns out that people see that it's beautiful, at the same time it's very national flavor. She's a very creative person, she's unique, I love her, like a sister. Even relatives were surprised with what she did. Even now, when we look at such a miracle, let me kiss you. Oh, thank you very much. You see how beautiful she is? She will be pleased. Yes, she will be pleased. Thanks again. Where is she going, Lola? London. So, she will go to London this time. Thank you very much. Thank you, girls. Here's a doll for you. Take it. Thanks. And now we will go to the workshop I talked about. It is on the first floor, in the basement where we create dolls and we give a piece of our soul into each doll. Now I'll change and we'll start. Everything in the workshop is done by the craftswomen. Here's the heart of our workshop. Now I'll show you how we will mold the dolls. Look, here is this usual clay from which will turn into magnificent ceramics. We dissolve this clay in water. Here we have a special barrel. After a while it turns into a slip. Of course all this must go through a sieve and cleaned of extraneous elements and sand. Then you get such a smooth liquid slip for the dolls. It looks like this. We stir the slip well, then it will be smooth. Then our molding begins. You can stir the slip using the electric motor. But when you do it manually, it turns out much better. Fill up to the end and several times, depending on the thickness of the crock. Gypsum molds are prepared by specialists. We have a lot of gypsum molds, depending on what we want to do. A crock is the thickness of the wall. Depending on that, we will fill it up. In this case, we need to fill this form with gypsum 5-6 times so that we get a normal doll. We will necessarily remove all the air or the bubbles that we have there. And pour out that slip that we did not need. We will put these forms here. They must stay this way at least seven hours. But since this is a lengthy process, I will show you ready forms and the further process. Are you sudden, Larissa? Yes. Show how to do it. 
show how you make it with the brush. The brush should be made of squirrel, always soft. Everything is made very gently. This is after the mold. A doll is formed and then go the details. We use a soft brush. After that, we will burn the dolls in the kiln. So put everything so it all fits. Everything should be even. That's it. The kiln was turned on. Now it will heat to a temperature of 960 degrees for seven hours. We will watch the voltage, temperature, and record them. Should I write it down? Yes, yes, of course, write it down. I'll write it then. This is already burned ceramics. It's red. The sound goes like this. After we baked doll parts, breathed the soul in her, we lift it up to put together. Now Tamara is making it. She's attaching hands with a needle. This is done like this. We have an adapter made of rubber so the hands can move. So it will be easier to put clothes on a doll. Girls, we will have Chorism Girl, but a modern one. Here is a cutout dress. In general, the Chorism costumes are not cut out, they're just straight. And on her head, she will have a takia, a cap with a special decoration and necessarily a feather. That's how we will decorate it, and from behind we'll make this thing look more festive. And finally the last stage. When we dress the doll, she will have everything, accessories and hair. Although this is still difficult to do, but it will get a final look and will be ready. I get the knowledge from lots of my books. I have a book called To the History of Costumes of the Peoples of Uzbekistan, which Zukra Rahimo gave me. There are a lot of sketches for costumes, a wonderful book. I use the book of Nafisa Sadikova, Doctor of Historical Sciences, and, of course, miniatures of 12th, 13th century. Here are wonderful miniatures on which we can see the costumes. But the work in the workshop is just part of the art. They still need to make sure that the fine dolls are seen by true connoisseurs and they have found a place on the shelves of collectors. Dilbar, do you remember? We have a meeting. We must go to the souvenir boutique. Oh, I completely forgot. You work a lot. What time is it? So it's five minutes to. Should you change clothes? Yes, I'll change. All right, girls, let's work. Go change, I'll wait for you. Bye. Bye. Look. What are you doing here? These are my favorites. My granddaughter, Kamala. Grandson, Iskander. This is my daughter, the teacher. Let's go. You will go with us. Come on. Good evening. How are things with our dolls? The sales of your dolls are good, especially the one in Vale. This is our national flavor. The bride is also popular. Handmade. We will bring you more. Our dolls are sold here with the national souvenirs. Besides dolls, there are a lot of ceramic products of all kinds. 
From such stores, my dolls go to meet their new owners, and it is sad, but at the same time, joyful. I'm happy. Счастлива.